the genesis of the world of Bayonetta was wanting to have an action game where uh, the main character could do actions that normal humans couldn't do. So we selected a witch because she can use magic to fight her enemies. And I consulted with the staff to find out, you know, what enemy would be a good enemy for Bayonetta to fight. And one of the ideas came out was uh, angels. The reason being is that you usually, one, don't fight angels, and two, uh, they would be incredibly powerful. So by selecting angels to be the enemies and having a witch as a main character, we turned the idea of good and evil on its head. It's not really an influence, but the original Devil May Cry team, which was together eight years ago, by a, a varied set of circumstances, was never able to make the sequel to, to Devil May Cry. But our passion for action games hasn't really disappeared in that eight year span. So during that time period, uh, we made lots of different titles and we gathered lots of different experiences. And when it came around to the time when we started up Platinum Games, Hashimoto-san gave me the idea by saying, you know, I'd really like to see you make another action game. And that really sunk in with me, and we had an excellent staff with all of this know-how that we built over eight years. So we were able to put all these ideas and all these uh, things that we've thought about and wanted to put in the game for ages into this one game. The key point to Bayonetta's battle system is that she can equip weapons on her hands and feet. And you start off with uh, handguns, but there are many other weapons above that. So you might have a katana or you might have top of bazookas. And as you play through the game, you'll be switching these weapons and combining these weapons in different ways to you know, attack your enemies and develop your own style and proceed through the game. And obviously the face-off between the main character and the enemies and that battle system on that level is really important and we put a lot of effort into that. But above that we've wanted to make the game even more dynamic. So we call the game a climax action game and that's because we wanted to take the ideas of the climactic scenes in movies where lots of things are happening around the fight and put that into a game. So you've got all of these dynamic stages where you're fighting against the enemies um, creating a really, really interesting variation on the action genre. The most important part of the battle system that we've always held as our diamond here was making sure that the control response was as good as it could possibly be. So making sure that it feels like you're directly controlling Bayonetta and everything that you want her to do is actually what's happening on screen. For a, a large variety of reasons, we made Bayonetta a female character and we wanted a female character in the game. And so how that reflects upon the soundtrack is that we wanted to make sure that it was more elegant. So when you have this really kind of violent, hyperactive action game, you think of really kind of heavy, crushing metal or rock. But with Bayonetta being a female character, we wanted to express her elegance. So we went for something a little bit more retro and some jazz arrangements, things that reflected the femininity of Bayonetta. When we started this game, we wanted it to be a core action title. We wanted to make sure that the core action gamers would really enjoy themselves and play in the game. So we put all of our energy and focus into that. But we realized that these uh, beginning players or people who are more casual aren't going to be able to play up to the standard of these uh, action game fans. So we created a mode that we don't call easy, we call easy automatic. And it's not just, you know, adjusting the player's strength and the, the player's strength up and the enemy's health down. What we did was we allowed players to play the game by pressing one button and executing the same kind of moves that high-end players would be able to execute. So they can play the game and feel like they're a high-end player without having to know all of these you know, core action conventions that the core action gamer uses while they play. Uh, I wouldn't think it was a completely original combo system, but it wasn't something that we looked at other games and were trying to mimic what they were doing. So, for instance, uh, in Bayonetta you can punch, and a punch is very quick, but it's not necessarily the most powerful attack. And a kick would be a little bit slower, but more powerful. And combining those two together, you can make all sorts of different combos. So, it's not necessarily the most original idea, but it's something that we worked on and polished and made better and better as we went along.
with Bayonetta, we think we've created a, a world that's compelling, that's got plenty of secrets, but also plenty of uh, interesting areas as well. And we'd like to complete, continue expanding this world and making it more interesting. Now, whether that be another game, or whether that be uh, an animation, an uh, anime, whether that be a motion picture, I don't know, but we'd like to keep expanding the game world that we've created further and further. Personally, and I don't really know how my bosses in the company thinks, but I think if you play Bayonetta, you're going to see that uh, not just Bayonetta, but all the characters that are in the game are these compelling, interesting characters that people are going to connect with and enjoy. So, if they connect with those characters and find them interesting and compelling as well, I hope that we can keep expanding that out in different directions.